Let g and f be injective functions, where g maps elements from some set A to some set B, and f maps elements from that set B to some other set C. So these are both injective functions or one-to-one -one functions, meaning they map distinct elements to distinct elements. Then their composition, f of g, is injective, and we'll be proving that in today's Wrath of Math lesson. So since the codomain of g is b, and the domain of f is b, we of course can compose these functions. We can consider the composition function f of g. Quickly before we jump into the proof, what are the domain and codomain of this function? Well, remember in function composition, the order is from right to left. So an element will be evaluated in the function g first, and then it will be evaluated in f. So elements that go through this function will need to start in the domain of g, which of course is the set a. Then g will send them to some element in the set b, and then of course they can go into the function f, which will take them from B and send them to some element in the set C. So that's going to be their final landing place. So this composition function, f of G, will take elements from A and send them to the set C. We want to prove that given G and F are injective, the composition F of G is also injective, meaning if we take two distinct elements, we'll say X and Y from the domain, so these are distinct elements, X is not equal to Y, then their images under this function are also distinct. That's what it means for this function to be injective. So that means F of G of X is not equal to F of G of Y. If we put distinct elements in to the function, their images that come out will also be distinct. Proving this is very straightforward. We basically just have to apply the definition of injective a few times. So I definitely recommend giving it a try yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. Hopefully you've done that, and now let's get into the proof. And we can basically begin our proof with these two lines. Consider the composition function, f of g, that maps elements from a to elements of c. Then consider two distinct elements, x and y, from the domain, x and y from a, where x is not equal to y. And like we just went over, we want to show that the images of x and y under the function f of g must be distinct as well, since x and y are distinct. And we really just have to think through the progression of this function. So an element is going to start being evaluated in the function g. And what do we know about g of x and g of y? Well, we know since x is not equal to y, g of x cannot be equal to g of y, because g, we're already assuming, is an injective function. So if we input these two distinct elements, their images under g will also be distinct g of x is not equal to g of y because g is injective. Then of course, since g maps elements to b, we know that g of x and g of y, they are distinct elements of the set b. That's the codomain of g. So g sends x and y to distinct elements in b, and of course b is the domain of f. So these are distinct elements of f's domain. g of x is not equal to g of y, and they are both elements of b. Then we can consider what happens when we put these two elements into the function f. And what do we know about that? What do we know about f of g of x and how it relates to f of g of y? Well, since f is also an injective function, we know that these two things must not be equal. Since g of x is not equal to g of y, and we assumed that f is an injective function, we know that the image of g of x and the image of g of y under the function f, those images must be distinct. f of g of x is not equal to f of g of y because f is injective. So we put those distinct elements into f, they're gonna come out also being distinct. And now what does this look like, my friends, f of g of x? f of g of y, by definition, that's just our function composition, f of g, evaluated at x, and evaluated at y. So this is the same as saying f of g, that composite function, evaluated at x, is not equal to that composite function, f of g, evaluated at y. And this is the line we really wanted to get to, because this demonstrates that our composite function, f of g, is injective. 
if we take any two distinct elements from the domain, their images under the composite function f of g will also be distinct, which followed easily from the fact that g and f are both injective functions. And so that is our conclusion. Thus, the composite function f of g is injective. If distinct elements go in, then distinct elements come out. And of course, remember that f of g of x and f of g of y, they are both elements of c, the codomain of the composite function. Since f is the last part of this composite function, and of course, f sends elements to c. So we've just proven that function composition preserves injectivity. If we've got this pair of injective functions and we compose them, then that resulting composite function will also be injective. And that shouldn't seem too surprising, especially if you were to represent this with a diagram, I think it would seem really obvious. So it makes for an easy proof, and it suggests a couple interesting questions. The first one that comes to mind is, is the converse of this statement true as well? If we know that f of g is injective, does it follow that f and g are both injective? The other question would be, is this same result true for surjective functions? So if we knew that g and f were surjective instead of injective, would it follow that the composition is surjective as well? Let me know what you think about both of those questions down in the comments. And I'll do lessons answering both of them very soon, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. So I hope this video helped you understand this simple proof about injective functions. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and I already said subscribe, but another reason to subscribe is for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description.